I'm Kimberly C. Palm. As I travel throughout each state, I realize that death is just a moment. It is how we live until that moment that matters. Finding connection with friends, family, and complete strangers. Journey with me. This is the Live Well, Die Well Tour. So we're here today with, I guess, an old friend, you know, Vicky Rancero, and we traveled the same hallways almost 20 years ago. Yeah. So I was a peon on Saturday Night Live and and was in the talent department in, I think, 94, 95. What, what did you do with Saturday Night Live? I was just there as a page with like... Doing oh, you were the NBC page. Yes. I had the coveted Saturday Night Live assignment where we got to bring the guests to the cast party. And we were allowed to wear <laughs> jeans instead of our page uniform. So it was a big deal. So what years were those? Was it the same ones? No, I was there in 90. So oh, wow. A little bit before wow. you. Yeah. Paving mm. the way. Paving the way. Well, I appreciate it because my way was bumpy. <laughs> um, but I'm telling you, anybody who has worked for SNL... It is zero to a hundred in a matter of, of seconds for sure. But yeah, it was sort of interesting how we were, we did run the same hallways, even though different years. Yeah. But I get this question all the time and I love that I'm getting ready to ask it to someone else. How did you go from the halls of Saturday Night Live to Reiki and in this whole end of life field? Um, because that's the question I always get. Yeah. Well, it's interesting because a lot of people who see how I've transitioned from the television world in general, I went from working on, as an NBC page to a career in TV for over 25 years. And towards the middle of that, I was let go from a job at Nickelodeon that I absolutely loved. And it was one of those big corporate reorganization, nothing personal type things. And at the time, I decided to go to a spa for a couple of days and just regroup. And while I was there, I had a Reiki session. And it sounds so cliche, but the Reiki session truly cracked me wide open. Like I felt, oh, wow. felt things that like, I was like, what's going on? Did you just put heat on me? Are there lights in here? Did you just play a video? And she was like, no, no, no. You're just, your energy is moving and you, and it all sounded so woo woo and, and kind of <laughs> out there. But I, at the end of it truly felt like transformed. Suddenly, the fact that I lost my job was not such a big deal. I actually felt freed from it. And I felt excited for the new adventure of the next chapter of my life. And the ginormous shift that I had, she actually said to me at the end, you just connected with this energy in such a profound way. You're meant to be a Reiki master and you're going to help many people. And so, of course, I kind of shrugged it off and said, oh, come on, I'm a TV producer. I'm going back to New York to get my next gig. And over the years, I kind of always had that little voice, like that whisper and the pull, because I had always wanted to really work in the health related fields and help people. My dad was a doctor and it was definitely something I admired in him. But the whole like blood and guts and all that just really wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> Let's well. just talk about the real things. We didn't want to see blood and guts. That's great. <laughs> so I just, it was more the... um the helping people and sure. trying to find a way to do that. And um, for me, I loved storytelling. I loved writing. And so I just kind of ended up in TV because I loved all of that. But then when I had that Reiki session and felt that pull, I started to really listen to that and slowly started to take Reiki classes. And when I got to turning almost 50, I said to my husband, this is it. By the time I'm 50, I want to be a full-blown Reiki master. I have to follow this, this path. And so um, that's kind of what I did. And in that process, at one point, I also took a three-day death doula class. And it was about seven years ago when it wasn't quite yet a certification class. It was just, I can reach out to the Open Center and get the certification, but my class didn't quite have that yet. And it was just really the connections in there and the way that I felt mm. in some of the end-of-life workers talk about the energy that they saw and the different experiences they had really resonated and woke some things up in me that kind of were always there since childhood. Wow, man, that's really cool. Thanks, yeah. So first of all, what the hell is Reiki? 
<laughs> okay. Well, really- you know, I mean, but I, I've had it before. Yeah. And how did you? And feel? you know what? It was an interesting um, experience because I found even I, I cried a couple of times and I didn't even know, but it was like something that was released. Exactly. Yeah. Reiki by definition is two Japanese words, Ray meaning light and Ki meaning energy. So it literally trans, you know, transferred as light energy. But what it really is, is that light inside of all of us, our life force energy that connects us to every living thing, every thing that breathes. So when you look at the, a tree that's growing and going through the seasons, the Reiki in the tree is what's moving through those seasons, the clouds in the sky, the waves in the ocean. And when you start to really connect with yourself in that way, and you realize you're so much more than your physical body, that's when you really connect with your Reiki. And for me, I was with my grandma when she died and I was just kind of called on the phone, like this is happening. You have to get here, hopped on a train. I was on a film shoot. And by the time I got there, my grandma had like what the nurse was calling this death rattle, which was a breathing that was so hard to hear. And I just instinctively started placing my hands on her and I wasn't yet studying Reiki. This was about 12 years ago, but my grandma started to kind of calm down. She actually smiled. And her breathing kind of really, really slowed. And on the last breath, I saw vapor leave her and circle the room. And I kind of started swirling my head around. And my brother was like, Vic, what are you looking at? What are you doing? And I said, you don't see that? And I was so completely blown away. It was so clear to me. And I couldn't understand how he couldn't see it. That that's when I knew I must have a sensitivity to energy. I really have to connect with this and follow this. And that's what led to the death doula class. and. It was crazy sitting there like, I'm a TV producer while all these other people were doctors, nurses, and hospice <laughs> workers. But when I told that story of the, the vapor, they all had very similar stories. A lot had seen really? something like that, which um, kind of validated for me that your energy really lives on and goes somewhere. And so talk about the energy. I mean, I, I'm, I'm going to use this word and it's probably going to be wrong, but there's such energy like chakras. Yes. Right. So talk to me about that. All of us have them. Yes. All of us have seven. We have lots of chakras, but the seven main chakras that are talked about the most go up your spine from the root of your spine to the very top of your head. Your root chakra is for your grounding. And then moving up, you have your, the next chakra is your sacral chakra. It's your feelings. And then the solar plexus is your confidence. Then the heart chakra, then the throat chakra, the third eye and the crown. And when one chakra is blocked, it can affect the others and your flow is not optimal. So if you imagine like a river that has like beautiful flow and everything's great. And the next day there was a big storm and you go to that same river and it's like erratic and there's sticks and muck that are blocking the way. That's exactly the same as our energy body. Like when you have something stressful happen or trauma or or the storms of life, it can disrupt your flow. And when your flow is disrupted, it's affecting your overall health and your physical health, your mental health is all connected to the energy body. And it's so what do you so what does an appointment look like with you, Reiki master? <laughs> I mean, it, yeah, but what does that look like? I mean, how how do you move energy to make the water calm again? Well, what's amazing is in Reiki one, you're learning how to connect with the Reiki inside yourself. And you're really, you're doing a series of hand positions every day to kind of get connected to those different chakra points and feel, oh, I think this might be blocked and and to kind of understand, because it sounds a little bit like too abstract to kind of grasp until you really feel it. And then in Reiki two, you actually start to learn how to send Reiki through distance and time. Like I could say to you, okay, Kimberly, when we're done with this, let's set up a session. You're going to lay down and I'm going to send you some Reiki. And you could think I'm nuts, but you will feel the Reiki. And that to me was when I just really was like, whoa, this is something that I'm so lit up about because if you can do this, I have clients in South Africa. If you can be sending Reiki through distance and time, it's just like how we're able to connect right now on this Zoom call. If we sat here and scientifically dissected how the frequencies work and how it's how this is actually able to happen, this broadcast that's happening, it's similar to what's happening with us energetically. When we synchronize a time that we connect, 
you can actually tap into the person's energy field, enter that energy field and feel where they're blocked in their, in their chakra system. And it's, it's truly magical. It really feels like magical. Can you, can you feel if any of my chakras are blocked right now? Well, we'd have to synchronize and I'd have to. Oh, you have to meditate and get in that. Oh, gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Because I think, I think in my shoulder, I mean, I think I'm, I mean, after a day of podcast recordings and stuff, plus just life in general with COVID. Yeah. Yeah. And what's crazy is like, you know, you and me being from the TV world, I worked with an editor for so many years who was really like an alpha male kind of guy. And when I was studying Reiki, he's like, oh, come on, what is this you're learning? And all of a sudden he needed back surgery. And suddenly he was home for a bunch of days in so much pain. And he called me up and he said, Vic, you know what? Try your thing. That thing you talked about, the distance. (laughs) And so I tried it and I felt like, ooh, like so much pressure. I wanted this to be great for him. He's a good friend. And he knew me in that whole world. And I couldn't believe it, but I was feeling the energy in his back and I was working on the energy. And as I was, I certain, I all of a sudden felt something in my shoulder, like, like a, a pain in my shoulder. So I moved over to his shoulder and I started to work on that. And when I was all done, he called me up and he said, I cannot believe it. I actually felt you working on my back. My back <gasps> is feeling so good. And I said, yeah, but it's weird, Joe. Was, did you have something with your right shoulder? Because I worked on that too. And he was like, oh my gosh. I was, I woke up funny this morning and my shoulder's been killing me and I didn't want to mention it because I was grateful enough that you were working on my back, but I cannot believe you also felt the pain in my shoulder. And I said, well, does it feel any better? And he's like, it actually does. So it's, it's kind of crazy. Like the person has to be open and they have to be willing to receive the energy. Some people say, oh, I'm really open, but in their brain, they're really thinking she's crazy. And then, <laughs> They're not going to feel it. You know, it's like they're energetically blocking it from happening. So it's awesome. Well, I, I do believe in energy. Yeah, I do. I mean, I, I feel, I feel so much. And even to the point that one person, she was not a Reiki master, but she's goes, you, you have a, a tendency to hear things and to feel things with energy. And I was like, I know, yeah. but I, they're like, you, you've never explored anything like that. I'm like, no, yeah. No, I haven't. But you know, it does seem woo woo yeah. when you have not experienced it. Mm-hmm. Like for instance, you know, I, I, first of all, I don't, I don't like ghosts. I don't, I don't, I don't, I never wanted to believe in ghosts, but I do believe that in Italy, when I was in Venice, there was a ghost that was sleeping with me. And I'm like, look, you're scaring me. You've got to go. And he's like, so, I mean, I heard him kind of like, sorry. And it poof, it was gone, but I felt someone around me. Wow. Wow. I'm wow. like, and in Venice where it's wow. creepy anyway, Yeah, you know what I mean? It's kind of spooky at night where all those, but still I, I, it's those sort of things that, that allow me to be very interested and open to it because I have felt it. Yeah. And and that's the thing when you talk about end of life, like when you're seeing somebody's physical body, well, like literally melting away. I mean, my father was, was very, very ill with COPD 